friends let's tune this guitar I want to sing one more song before we start learning 
And this is a song written by someone who has touched my heart since I'm a little, little kid. And uh, it's a person I, I, I'm gonna, I just decided right now, I'm gonna call him after the shear and just, uh, and just tell him that. Why not? This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tune written by Ellie Kranzler. Um, and this song just touches my heart in such a passionate way. If you know it, please sing with me, okay? And even though the words are gam ki elech, I want to see some smiles, okay? Because ki ata imadi. Ki ata imadi. Oh, you know, 
so much thank you wow however you think it's possible to answer the title of the sheer you think it's possible to answer the title of the sheer what's going on why is why is what's happening happening of course not and in the same breath it's forbidden to not try to go deep inside and, and ask, what are you really saying, Hashem? What are you really saying? Some people see those two things as a, as a, as a contradiction, as a stira. But if it's impossible to know, then it means, why even bother? But in the panimi, panimius of everything, Hashem is saying, to each and every one of us right now, to each and every one of us in the whole world right now, saying, I need you to go deep inside. Bo ata v'chol beitcha el ha-teva. It's a mabul out there. Hashem told Noach in the mabul, you and your family, come into the teva, go into the ark. The Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh taught us, teva means, not just ark, it also means the word, davening. Go into the tefillah. Because I see there's an akud of tzaddik in each and every one of you. So tonight, what I wanted to do for a few minutes is to speak about something that I'm just going to go out right now and say that this was going to be, or at least a chunk of it was going to be, our Shabbos Agad Drasha this year. And uh, it's not because I don't think there'll be a Shabbos Agal Drasha. Hashem can do anything. Hashem can do anything. But right now, I feel like, why am I waiting till then to share what, what's really going on in my heart? I was planning this in, in a certain form for already a while already, for a month or two. And I realized that this is, this is exactly Poyashiv Ki Visiya. This is where I want to be because this is, this, is where, this is where I want. This is what I want to hold on to. And I want us all to take three deep breaths, visualizing right now ourselves just being caressed by the King. Okay, now we're a bit more ready to enter to this chamber called Pia Setsna, called the Esh Kodesh. I cannot imagine a day in my life without the Rebbe, but I definitely, definitely cannot imagine going through what we're going through right now without the love and the guidance and the support of the Pia Setsna Rebbe, Reb Klonim was come in Shapira, Hashem Yikom Damo, who we all know was killed in the war. However, his his his, his body was killed in the war and his neshama has been more alive every single day since then. And Shul, one of the things that my, my beautiful Hevra, who I love so much and I miss them so much, even though I see them a few times a day on, on the computer, but Baruch Hashem, if, if there's one thing I, they know I'm, I'm a sugar about in Shul, is consciousness and awareness that we're standing in front of the king. And certain Shul's are not, it, it's more an Indian of we have to just make sure everyone feels at home, which is, of course, it's important. But we want to include Hashem when we say everyone should feel at home. And therefore, in our, by us, the concept of talking versus not talking, is if someone asks you, someone would ask me, what kind of shul are you, do you, do you allow talking during shul or not? I'd say, if that's, if that's one of your questions, it's probably not the right show for you. It's not about talking or not talking. It's about, why am I coming? Why do I show up? Why am I there? Now, again, 
it's impossible to give a straight answer as to why what's happening is happening. And I, Katonti, I would never dare, even if I had the greatest theory that made perfect sense to me, I wouldn't have the chutzpah to say anything. I wouldn't have the chutzpah to tell anybody why bad things happen to someone. Ever. Ever. Bezrat Hashem. But I do know that there's something that's sitting so deep in my heart, and I pray right now in front of all of you, Takadish Baruch that what we'll be sharing tonight comes out bedar noam, comes out in sweetness. It comes out with a way the ofen amit kabel, in a way that can be received, in a way that can be nurtured, and in a way that can be reciprocated, in a way that we can do something with it. Most of my real friends feel very, very lonely in shul. Most of my close chaverim in the world, almost wherever they are, they don't feel at home in shul. They feel lonely in shul. And the joke is that it's the yetzer. They always have to, they can't figure out if to go and daven alone in a forest is a yetzer hara or it's a yetzer tov. They can't figure out which one it is. I once had a long conversation about this with Rav Daniel Katz, just about this Indian, exactly this Indian. Is, this, is it a Yetzir Hara to want to go out to the field? Or is it a Yetzir Tov? Because we need Shul to go and be receiving our oxygen. We need to have a place of communion, of showing up in order so that we can breathe again. But somehow over the years, and I have no idea why, I have no idea how it happened. But we see across the board, across the board, that we just got so accustomed to a certain part of our culture without remembering what the whole point of an Ohel Moed is all about. A shul is an Ohel Moed, a tent of Moed, of meeting, of meeting someone. And it's amazing that, you know, all the Musr Shmuzes in the world about the importance of Shul, the importance of quiet in Shul, the importance of the Bet Neset, we're seeing that it doesn't really do it. There's something still, there's something not there. And tonight I want to go and approach this Indian because I believe, I believe, personally, I believe with my whole heart and soul that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling us something right now because as a dear friend of mine just shared between Mincha and Marev, we were doing some learning between Mincha and Marev, and he was talking about the concept of tefillah, that we realize right now we're, we're, our game is tefillah right now. We don't even understand what that means. We're, it's beyond our wildest dreams. But right now, the Nakuda, you and I know, what can we do other than listening to Hora'ot, other than listening to instructions and making sure we don't get sick or make anyone sick? Do, are any of us exempt from pouring out our hearts and soul to God and begging Hashem, begging Hashem, from a quiet and calm place, but nonetheless begging God, please end this misery. Please bring an end to so many families that are suffering so much. So tefillah and the whole parsha of what davening is about must be elevated in levels that we never knew is possible. We never knew is possible, or we never thought we could get to it so fast. However, none of us have a ptor. You cannot exempt yourself. You, me, each and every one of us has to go into our hearts right now and say, what's my concept of davening? What really, what's my concept of prayer? Because right now, I know that's all I have. But I want to think about the day after this Mishigas ends. One of my friends shared a very depressing Facebook status. I shared this on one of the, one of the broadcasts earlier in the week, last week said that the saddest thing that he, that he feels is that when this is all over, we're just going to go back to the way things were. Chas v'shalom. That would be worse than it is now. That's the last thing in the world that we want. So what do we want? We want to make sure that when we're allowed to step foot back in our ohel mo'ed, that we're really there. 
we want to make sure when we're privileged to come back and congregate together, we walk into a shul and we say, Matovu Alecha Yaakov, Mishkanaisecha Yisrael. We want to know that we are showing up. We want to make sure that we've learned the lesson. We've learned the lesson of what davening is all about. So with all that in mind, I want to invite the schus of the Piyasetz Nerebbe, of the Heliger Plonimus Kalman Shapira, to come and please guide us and direct us with tonight's text. One short piece, which you'll have in front of you in one second. This is a piece from the ninth chapter of Chovat Talmidim, a student's obligation. The great privilege, I, I was learning this, this sefer with one of the incredible kids in Arkehila who inspires me all the time. I want to dedicate this to him, to Abi. Abi's a boy that, uh, he doesn't need to learn this piece, and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is a very special, special, special thing. So look at the top over here. This is the ninth chapter in Chovat Talmidim. And the Piyaset Tzunebbe says like this, and we'll go slowly, slowly. יש חושבים שכל עצמה של התפילה היא הדאגה והצרות שעליה מתפללים. There are those that think that the etzem, the essence, that what davening is all about, is worrying and davening over tzarot, davening over bad things that may happen to you and that may be occurring to you in your life. Just like what, second line? Just like a pauper asking a rich person. Or any human being from a, that's asking a king of flesh. Or like anyone that goes to the person that has the keys in their hand to whatever they're asking. That's how many of us view davening. We need something. We go to that place that we need. Now, this happens to be very, very, very um, confusing for the breast liver in us. And I'll try to explain why. The breast liver in us has learned the teaching from Rabbi Nachman. And Rabbi Nachman says that a person has to ask everything from Hashem. If you need a shoelace, he asks God for his shoelace. You need 12 shekel to fill in a grocery, you ask Hashem for that. Don't just leave, you know, leave like the big, big things to Hashem. And here the Rebbe is saying that there are people, and you could see, you could hear the tone of what he's saying. There are people that will view this as, as just asking when you need something. Now the truth is, is that yesh bezemashu. We're going to see how the PSS never develops this. Third line, aval. Rak ish ba'ar velo yeda yachol lechalel kach we say this on Friday night. Um, the Piyasetz Nebbe says, only a fool, only someone who is absolutely lacking a, a cup, lacking a brain. Who, um, if whoever is just doing these highlights on the text, if I don't know how to stop it, if you don't mind just to keep the arrow off and, and it's okay, we're going to follow on our own. It's only a person that, that doesn't know that davening is so much more than this. What does he come to? Look what he calls it. You know, when you tell someone you, you are a chil Hashem, that's like the worst thing you could say to somebody. Usually we understand Chilul as a desecration. You're desecrating God's name. Chilul Shabbos, you're desecrating the Shabbos. But Chalal, the Chalel, also comes from the word Chalal, which means empty space, vacant space. Le Chalel kokach et atfila. Sorry, Chevra. I'm not sure why this keeps on happening. Okay. But the Rebbe says that someone that views davening like this, it's like someone that is, that is Mechal Shabbos. If you come to shul only because you need something from the boss, 
It's like your machal in Shabbos, he says. And then he continues and he says, Ule chashva rak tzorech hadagot. And to just be thinking about the worries that he has and, and, and all the needs he has. The end of the first paragraph. And if a person didn't need God, he wouldn't pray, God forbid. Now, we're looking at a person like this and we're like, who, 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 what kind of person like that exists, right? And Gavad Rebona Shleilam, I stand here before you. And I'm sure many of my friends here stand here before you tonight and say, so much of our life is like this. I run to you. I run to you when I need you. I relate to the world of davening on this level, of when I need something from you, I run to you. And when I don't feel like I need tzarich, that I have a need. So the Rebbe says, if I didn't have this need, it's true, master of the world. I can't. I can't really tell you, Belev Shalom, even though right now I may be feeling very high and very spiritual, I can't really say that I would come and run to you. Second paragraph, Ki be'emet ha-tfilah be'atzma, davening itself, hitkarvut ha-lev, interesting choice of words, hitkarvut ha-lev, the heart coming closer, v'hishtabchut ha-nefesh la-shem ba-tfilah, and pouring out the soul to God in prayer, Zohi ha'ikar asher batfila. The PSS Nenev is saying, you want to know what davening is all about? Of course, included in it is the simple prayer and request for things. But really what davening is, is experiencing yourself. Hishtabchus ha'nefesh, pouring out your soul to God in davening. Hiskarvu Salev, he says here. Hitkarvu Talev, your heart getting closer to yourself, to what matters, to what's important, and to what's meaningful. That's what the Rebbe says is what davening is all about. That's what davening was, was made for. That's why God t- told my Rabbeinu, make a Mishkan, make an Ohel Moed, make a place where you and I could meet. Can you imagine if when husband and wife if, if they end up in a relationship where they meet in a place where it's only about things they need from each other, it's done. When it comes to spouses, once that's the basis of the relationship, it's over. Did you ever need to just be close? Did you ever need to be with your loved one because you wanted to experience yourself? You know, we leave these things, these concepts to the deep mystics, to to the most, like, like very far out Kabbalist, Napitom. It's you and I. We have access to all of this. We just have to be reminded what it's all about. Second paragraph, second line. Lo bilvad she'en ha-tfila mesubevet min ha-de'agot ve-hatsarot, rak she'lifamim et ha-de'agot sholeach Hashem k'day she'nitpalel elav yitbarach. And this blew my mind. When I saw this the first time, this made me shake, shake. The Rebbe says, do you know why you have worries? Because it's Hashem's way of saying, I miss you. I miss you. That's what he just said. Hashem Hashem God is saying, I miss you. It's the only way I can get your attention. I wish it wouldn't be like this. I wish I didn't have to send Corona so I could hear your crying out to me. But I miss you too much to just pretend that we can go on like this, you and I. I miss you too much. So even if the closeness will be established now through this, and it's a lower level, at least you and I are talking again. At least you're coming to visit. So the Shaila is, how do we take upon ourselves right now that once this Mishigas ends, we're going to this place without Hashem having to send us Sarot in order to be in a constant relationship, a constant communication. Third paragraph. Ita bishmot rabba. It says in the Midrash. You know what this is like? Amar Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. 
And I love Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, because Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi is a very, very interesting tzaddik. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi is, 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 is one of the tzaddikim that actually went and met Mashiach in the chamber. And he asked him, when are you coming? So over here, Amar Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Lema davar Domeh, what is this similar to? Lemelech Shaya bat Baba Derech, a king who was on his way, who was traveling. Vahayta bat melachim tzoeket lo, and his daughter started screaming to him, Bevakasha mimcha, please, please, hatsilayi mimiyad halistim, please save me from these highway bandits. Shama ha-melech v'hitzila. So the king heard her, and he saved her. Sorry, this is not the daughter of that king. It's a, it's a, a daughter of another king that heard this, that, that, was in, that was trapped. So after a few days, this person, this, this, this king who saw this royalty, he, and he saved her, he wanted to now marry her. She wanted to be... He wanted her to speak to him, but she wasn't willing to. What did the king do? He sent those same bandits that he saved her from, he sent them back to her, so that she would start screaming again. Startling medrash. Startling medrash. He sent the same people that he saved this woman from, he sends them back only for one thing, because, because he misses you. The nimshal, how we learn out this mashal, is like the Rebbe says in the next paragraph, et nimshal betach atam mevin me'atzmecha. I'm sure you understand the nimshal on your own. I'm sure you understand it. Hanefesh elcha, your soul, Bat Melachim is a child of the king. Rotsa HaKadosh Baruch Hu lisa ota. When it means God wants to marry it, it means klomar shetit karev vetit yached bikdushato. God wants for you and the bat and, and him to become close together and vetit yached, to have yichu, to be one, to be alone in His holiness, and it's amazing now. God is not letting any of us be together. He's saying, I'm sorry. I want you one-on-one, -on -one because I don't think you heard my, my love yet. I don't think you've experienced my love. I need you to experience me one-on-one. -on -one. And that's why as beautiful and as meaningful as a lot of these virtual davenings are, we, I'm, I'm thankful we have the ability to do it because it enables people that want to say Kaddish, according to the Psaq of Rav Melamed, that they can say Kaddish. And it, it's very important for certain people to be able to look at each other and see each other. But on the other hand, this aspect of Hashem wants Yichud now, Hashem wants Yichud now, is, might be lacking, might be missing when we just act, when we just operate like that. This is what Hashem wants. Second line on the bottom paragraph. And, and it needs to daven and to talk to him. Why? Because through the inner prayers which are coming from the walls of the heart, the soul awakens from its sleep. Hanefesh mit oreret mishnata. Homa umit yachedet bamelech. It's harmonious and becomes one with the king, Malko shel olam, the king of the world. The Pyrsitz Nalebel says, Vehi ikara betachlita shel hatfila. This is why you go to shul. This is why I have a sidur for you. Ad sheyeshnan deagot sheHashem sholeach otan leish Yisraeli. Again, he says, there are worries, there are things that make us so nervous and stressed, and God sends these worries to the Jew, kedei sheyit orer al yadam liit palel, so that he'll wake up to daven, velitzok la Hashem mikerev libo venafsho, and he'll scream to Hashem from the inner chamber of his heart 
and his nefesh. Why? You think it's only about meeting God? Hashem is saying, I want you to meet you. When you base davening just on what you need from me, I can give that to you. But you know who you won't meet in that davening? You'll meet a part of me, God says. But you know who you're not going to meet? You're not going to meet you. My friends that are with us here online and my friends that are going to be with us later, they're going to be listening to this. What this is all boiling down to, as we're Erev Mashiach, is that when Mashiach comes, who's going to show up and greet him? Hashem wants us to know who we are. We want to know who we're coming to introduce before Mashiach Tzitkenu. But the only way that a Jew knows who he is, who she is, is when they meet themselves in that very vulnerable, beautiful, passionate place of tefillah. There are those that say, listen, you know, my thing is not really davening. My thing is more learning. There are those that might say, my thing's not really davening. It's more, uh, I don't know, fill in the blank, whatever it is. That doesn't work anymore. That's just not gonna, it never did work. And it's not gonna work in the future. And as a father to four beautiful, beautiful, precious little kids, I know that for our children, this is, this, this, this Sefer was written to, to, to kids, Chobata Talmidim, the student's obligation. This is for children, for you and I, for our children. Our children are experiencing meeting themselves in ways you and I could have only dreamed of. I see it every day with my child. Every one of them, I love this thing they have in, in, in the Ganim, and even in schools, I'm, I'm sure with your children they have it too, that something that's become mandatory is called Tfilah Ishit. I love when they go into Tfilah Ishit. Tfilah Ishit is like this moment of personal prayer, meaning, okay, you said a lot of things that were said, that were written for you, and Baruch Hashem, it's filled with holiness, it's filled with Kedusha, However, now go to Tfilah Ishit. Now, what do you want? What do you want? So, as we began tonight, Shir, and we said, what could possibly be the whole Indian that we're going through? What could it possibly be? After everything I said right now, I just want to say, maybe I'm completely off. I'm not trying to be humble or sound smart. I'm just being uh, as real as I possibly can right now. Maybe everything I, uh, we shared right now is not true. It could be. I have no idea. But if I had to guess and assume where Hashem is sending me towards, it's the question of how well do I really know myself? When was the last time I experienced myself? And if the answer is two weeks ago, then the next question is, and what did I do at that meeting? How did that meeting with myself frame my next day? What kind of a world am I building with those experiences? And that's basically why I want you all to join our community and join our shul. Meaning you're always invited. And, um, but that, that, that's what my dream is for our shul to be. You know, I, I live like literally like 20 meters away from the future site of our building. And I try to go there as often as possible and just like dive in over there and look at the beautiful, beautiful lot and just imagine and try to inhale the air that's there and, and, and not to exhale too much pollution, but to inhale the, the future that's, that's over there. Just to have another building so we could say we built a shul in Eretz Yisrael, it's a beautiful thing. Oh boy, is it a beautiful thing. But I don't think that's what Hashem needs or wants in today's day and age. But it seems to me what I feel in my heart of hearts is this piece from the Piyasetz Nerebbe is mamasha hora'at sha'a. That means it's like an emergency Torah. It's an emergency Torah. If we would somehow be able to tune in to taking upon ourselves that when this craziness ends and all of us should get through it, B'shalom, b'shalva, b'briut, with good health, and staying close to our loved ones, ad and even after that. When this is, and I, all, I heard all of you scream amen right now, don't worry, I heard it. When this is all done, 
what kind of a what kind of a world of prayer what kind of a meeting what kind of a date am i going to have with god what kind of a date am i going to have with my king how many more times do i need god to send back the bandits to get me to come and cry and scream to him so it shouldn't god forbid god forbid what it shouldn't do is that it shouldn't make us feel like we're being fake now so we shouldn't dive in now no 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 this is Hashem saying, I miss you so much. I miss you so much. I just want to hear from you. I want to be able to be in a room with you where all you hear is you. It's, an, it's a crazy thing. All right, we all know, those of us that are FFBs, we know, what was the one thing they gave us most most around growing up? Gavin and a minion, Gavin and a minion. And here, what are all the Rebbein, the ones that have a cup, that have a Seichel, are telling us? I shouldn't say that. Meaning the ones that are very much plugged into what's going on right now, they're saying to us, what Hashem wants of you right now is to be alone. What a, what a olam hafuch. It's so hafuch. But you know what? It's still adar. At least for another, how long? 48 hours? It's still adar. We're still in the hafuch al hafuch. But what a crazy world. My Rabbi, Rabbi Moshe Weinberger, Shlita Hashem should give him long life and good strength. He says all the time, he's talking about this day and night, that right now we've entered the aspect of what's called Vayivater Yaakov Levado. Levado. I saw tonight that Rav Ginsburg, he, 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 Rav Ginsburg has said, you know, Rav Ginsburg comes up with the most incredible things. I just want to find very quickly, someone had sent me, um, that Rav Ginsburg said that the gematria of Corona equals, you ready for this one? Corona equals Seichel Tov. You need to have a, you need to have a Seichel Tov in order to be open to the notion that what Hashem wants of you right now is, is exactly what we're speaking about. You need to have a Seichel Tov that allows you to go out of your whatever you thought needed to be, to all the commitments you had and all the things that you thought need to be, where, where it's like mamish, it's like, it's permanent sukkis. Semi diras keva. Go out of that permanent structure, that permanent thing, that, 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 that way that you always envision things to be. Get out of it. Get out of it. Get out of it. Find out. Meet yourself. Meet yourself. Find out what you've been longing Longing to express, you, didn't, you yourself didn't even know. But find out. Take this time, utilize this time. Take a, take a paragraph of Rav Cook until you cry over it. Listen to one nigun of Rav Shlomo until you start crying to it. But go there. This is the time, go there, meet yourself. This is the opportunity to be able to have an Ohel Mo'ed, to have a meeting, meeting Hashem, because He sent us these messages saying, I miss you. Sorry this is the way I'm getting your attention. But you know what you're going to hear eventually? That cry, that inner, inner scream. Oh, you're going to start screaming, I miss you too, and you're going to be talking to yourself. And you're going to meet your Nefesh Elokit you're going to meet your godly soul. Did you ever stop and say to yourself, I miss you? Or did you ever stop and say to yourself, nice to meet you? Nice to meet you. That's what the P.S. Sitzner is telling us tonight, friends. That's what the Rebbe is still screaming out to no German, no Nazi, no matter how long his gun was, could prevent the Rebbe from telling us that Hashem is calling out to us right now. So I have no idea what exactly it'll take. I just know that I'm so thankful to be able to learn with you, to daven with you, to sing with you, to think with you, and to choose together determination, resilience, but determination that when we're done with this, we're not going back to the way it used to be. Can you imagine going back to shul 
this Shabbos, because suddenly everything stopped and miraculously all the quarantines ended early or whatever it is, and he went back to shul and he had to shush someone in shul. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how sad that would be? It would be so sad. It would just be the saddest thing in the world. But shushing, like telling someone to be, that's just one Indian, it's just one thing. You fill in the blank. Can you imagine being able to go back to normal life, but still have to fight over such pettiness with people? Hashem Yishmar Otanu. Hashem Yisbarach, please, you see your children, you see us, your kindalach. Ta'inu kesei oved. We took a wrong turn at a certain point, like a lost flock. Ta'inu kesei oved. Bakesh avdecha. Bakesh avdecha. Come and seek, seek your servant. Seek your servant like you're seeking now, you're seeking us now, but please, please, please don't let us forget tonight's teaching, begging you, Hashem. Don't let us forget this incredible experience of meeting you on a certain level, yet knowing that there's so much, so much more. We'll end with one more nigun, friends. It's a nigun, it's your nigun, it's my nigun. It's our nigun, it's, it's, Master of the universe, I will sing a song to you. Where will I find you? Oh, but where do I not find you? Where I go, there you are. Where I stay, there you are too. Only you, you alone, you again. Only you, only you, only you, only you. Only you. Join me, friends. Master of the universe, I will sing a song to you. Where will I find you? Oh, but where do I not find you? Where with consistency 
I want us all to scream tonight before we go to sleep and wake up in the morning. Ribbono shalom. Ad masai. Until when? Until when? But not to put this finger in God's face. You could say, Ad masai. Ribbono shalom. We're going to be in Gadlut. But to look at myself and say, Ad matai. I'm ready. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to meet me. I'm ready to experience me. I'm ready to experience us.